Here's a factoring problem using splitting fields. In this case, we show a polynomial is irreducible by exploiting properties of finite fields. Then, we introduce a large class of irreducible polynomials. Now the problem, I want to show that g of x equal to x to the fifth minus x plus one is irreducible over the rationals by reducing the coefficients modulo five. We could show this using brute force. So by brute force, by the rational roots test, the only possible rational roots of our polynomial are plus or minus one, and they're not roots. So if this factored over the rationals, there can't be a linear factor over the rationals. That means it would have to factor as an irreducible quadratic times an irreducible cubic. Now by Gauss's lemma, if this had a factorization over the rationals, we would have a corresponding factorization over the integers. So when we put two and three together with brute force, factorization can't happen. So irreducible over the rationals. We'll show this in a different way. And that'll give us some factorization tricks using finite fields. Now, to start, okay, we still use Gauss's lemma. So if G factors over the rationals, then it has a non-trivial factorization over the integers. That lets us reduce the coefficients of the factors modulo five. So proposition, okay, we'll assume that G is monic, so that way when we reduce, okay, the lead term doesn't vanish. If, okay, so G bar, we'll call the polynomial G with the coefficients reduced modulo five. So if G bar is irreducible over Z mod five, then G is irreducible over the integers. Now, let's suppose we have a non-trivial factorization of G, so as H1 and H2. If we reduce modulo five, okay, we're still gonna have a factorization over Z mod five. So this couldn't be irreducible to start with. From here, we have options. One way is brute force. Because we're working over a finite field, there are only finitely many irreducible polynomials of a given degree. So we could start with degree one, take all possible products. They'll give the reducibles of degree two, What's left over are the irreducibles of degree two. And then we just work our way up to degree five. And then we see that this is irreducible. In our case, there's a special trick. Now, okay, so we have g bar equal to x to the fifth minus x plus one over z mod five. I'll let k be the splitting field for g over z mod five. Okay, it might be z mod five itself. Our first step, if beta is a root of g and k, and so is beta plus one. To see this, we use the binomial theorem in Z mod five. Now, if I take beta plus one to the fifth power, we apply the binomial theorem over the integers. Then we know it because five is a prime, when we reduce modulo five, all the middle terms are gonna drop out. So I'm left with beta to the five plus one. Because beta is a root of this polynomial, Okay, that's gonna be equal to beta. Now, if I compute g of beta plus one, okay, we put beta plus one in, we evaluate and substitute, and what comes out is zero. So beta plus one is also a root of this polynomial. Now, if I find a beta, okay, I could just keep applying this, and then we get the roots beta, beta plus one, beta plus two, beta plus three, beta plus four. These are all distinct. So, we know all the roots for G. Now, possibilities. Beta is already in Z mod five. Well, then the roots are every element of Z mod five. And by Fermat's little theorem, that means G is equal to X to the fifth minus X. By assumption, that's not the case. So, beta is not in Z mod five. Let's take the minimal polynomial of beta. Okay, so that's the polynomial smallest degree, such that beta is a root, okay, lead coefficient's one. This is irreducible. And because G of beta is zero, the minimal polynomial divides G. Now, that means the factors of the minimal polynomial, okay, are gonna come from these roots. So let's see what can happen. So if I take a product of some number of these factors, 
So say we have j of these, what do we get? Well, we'll have x to the j. The next term is gonna be in the form j times beta plus the sum of these i's that we're using. Now, that's gonna be a problem because beta is not in z mod five. Okay, when we adjoin beta, one and beta will be linearly independent. So the only way that this can go to zero is if j is divided by five. Okay, so in this case, that means j has to be precisely equal to five, and that means that g is irreducible. What we've been working with is a special case of what we call an Art and Schreier polynomial. These polynomials play a role in the advanced theory. For the general setup, we'll choose field F, characteristic P with P prime. The general Art and Schreier polynomial is in the form x to the p minus x plus alpha, where alpha is in f. And by the work we've already done, if alpha is not in the form gamma to the p minus gamma for any gamma in f, then g is irreducible over f. For the roots of g, if I can find one root beta, then the others are in the form beta plus one, beta plus two, all the way up through beta plus p minus one. Then we have that the splitting field for G over F is just F adjoined beta. Now, if we go back to the trick at the beginning, okay, we consider polynomials over the rationals of the form, X to the P minus X plus N, where P is a prime and N is an integer not divisible by P. This will always be irreducible over the rationals. So just use our work from before and we note if gamma is in z mod p, then gamma to the p minus gamma is always equal to zero by Fermat's little theorem. So always irreducible. 